It's me again, it's Menenberg. I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail on analysis using point number one to get the point of view. In the previous video, I did context. In my mind, context is the easiest. If I'm gonna fail on context, point of view is probably uh, the second easiest in, in my point, in my perspective. Um, so I'm going to explain just briefly, uh, again, you might want to reference the rubric to read along with how to get this point. Uh, but basically it says this to earn this point, the response, your response, your writing must identify how or why the document's point of view, uh, is relevant to your argument basically. So just as a reminder for this DBQ, you can use point of view for every single time you cap. If you, if you choose to, you can do context every single time. It doesn't really matter. They don't require that you do more than one different letter. You can do the same letter, but you just have to do different documents. So let's say, for example, you're reading through your documents and you see the point of view for docs two, three, and four are really easy. Take a whack at them. You can also do context for the same one. It doesn't really matter. You're just hedging your bets. Remember, once they check off that you did one of those letters for two documents, that's two analysis and reasoning points right there. Okay, for this adjusted rubric. So I want to talk about what point of view is and what it is not. First, let's tackle what it is not. Now, in the DBQs I've been reading, the most common error for this is simply giving me the source information that is already provided to you in the DBQ. So if you're reading the imperialism DBQ we did for the unit six exam, that would be identifying something like, oh, the point of view is the British prime minister. Yes, it is. Thank you. We have that information in the document. You've given us absolutely nothing of value. You should be deeply ashamed and you have brought shame upon your family. Okay. That's what it is not. What it is, is explaining why that information is actually important and how we receive it. Okay. So let's take an example of, of this video. The point of view for this video, the author is David Menenberg, your teacher. Okay. Now I am an AP world teacher. I have been uh, certified by the state of Washington to teach at a secondary level. That's a high school level. I have been uh, in a great deal of training for AP world history in particular. I have several years of experience. Um, I am employed by one of the best districts in the uh, state. All of these things, add to the credibility, if you will, of this person telling you this information. In other words, because of all of those things that I just listed, the words that I am saying carry to you, the listener, a little bit more weight and other, and you believe them more because I am saying them. Um, now, if my three-year-old walked into the screen and started reading he can't read, but if he started reading uh, the DBQ rubric, you would probably be entertained because he's fantastic, but you probably wouldn't get a ton of helpful information about the DBQ rubric because he doesn't know how it works. He hasn't taken the class. He hasn't read the book. He hasn't learned about the college board at this point in time. And so him just looking at that rubric with you is not going to be very helpful. Okay, so that point of view of an, a, a credible teacher adds to your ability to take that information and, and accept it. Um, so if you're reading a DBQ, let's go to that prime minister example. This is the chief politician for, in this case, the country of Great Britain. Okay, they have significant power and influence within that country, but with also within the uh, imperialized groups of people throughout the globe that England had uh, power over. Um, and they have a, a unique perspective insofar as they have an agenda, they have things they want to accomplish, they have the means to accomplish those things. And because of that, what they say is interpreted differently. Now, in the case of this document, they were talking about the Suez Canal and they were talking about how it's a political thing and it's a big deal. Great. That makes sense given the context of politics, right? Given the, the framework that the prime minister would be operating on. Now, on the other hand, if you were the prime minister and you were talking about your favorite recipe for chocolate chip cookies, I don't know if I care. Your point of view in that regard is kind of like, okay, you're just another person who happens to like cookies. 
Your opinion on this matter may or may not carry weight with me. I would probably take more seriously somebody who is a very talented chef, who, oh, maybe somebody who owns a bakery, uh, you know, that type of thing. That person's point of view matters more to me in the case of the chocolate chip cookie recipe. I hope that makes sense. But again, keep in mind that when you're taking this test, the chances of you have ever heard of these authors who wrote these documents is very low. There's a small chance, very small chance. So you're gonna operate on a very limited information they give you in that sourcing information, but you have to use some deductive reasoning. You have to assume that when it says prime minister, you may have heard of Disraeli, but you may likely have not heard of Disraeli. If you haven't heard of him and know what his track record was, fine. You can still use the date, the location, the title, uh, to make some assumptions about who or what that background might be and what that background might entail. So if you said David Menenberg, AP world teacher, you can make assumptions that I've went through a lot of training. I, maybe it says that I teach at Lake Washington School District or East Lake High School. That type of thing might help you identify whether or not the credibility is high. Okay, so again, you're tying it to the relevance to your argument. So I identified what the point of view of the AP world Menenberg teacher is, right? Now, why does that matter? Why does that matter for the argument? Okay, if I'm talking again about my chocolate chip cookie recipe, it doesn't matter. But if I'm talking about, I don't know, trends in world history or the effects of imperialism or decolonization or World War I, whatever it is, my perspective, my point of view is more relevant, okay? And that's what you're identifying. This shouldn't be two or three, more than two or three sentences, but you are doing so in, in a way that demonstrates to the reader that you understand that this particular document is coming from a framework that is different than another one, like the chocolate chip cookies, okay? I hope this illustration helps. Email me, contact me if you have questions. More videos to come very soon.